So we have different options. Mm -hmm. I, I think they'll be an attack. So for those of you who didn't really understand what my doctor said, he basically said that I'm having another multiple sclerosis attack. What a way to start off my fifth year of university, right? <laughs> So before I even get started, guys, this has been the most distracting thing, especially with school. I honestly, like, I just don't know what to focus on at this point because so many things just keep popping up in my head. It's stressing me out. But you know what? I'm going to deal with my attack stronger than I had in 2017. So multiple sclerosis? Bring it. Basically, this video, um, was just one of the moments I was, I was have I can't even speak. Basically this video was one of the moments I was having to myself where I just had to let everything out. And I mentioned before how I talk to myself sometimes in my room when I just need to talk about it just to myself. Um, and when I was doing that, I was like, you know what, I'm going to film this because maybe people can get a glimpse of what multiple sclerosis is like because it is absolutely frustrating. But you just have to keep a positive mindset to get through your day, right? I don't usually cry about having ass, like right now. So basically, for the past few days now, I've honestly been crying like pretty much every single day, um, stressing out about something that I've been thinking so much about, and I'm going to let you guys know what I was thinking about because it was just so bizarre to me. Stressing out about school, stressing out about my health, stressing out about my MRI, stressing out about my, about my infusion. There's so many things to be stressing about, you know, um, and I just wasn't having it and I just had to let it all out because I was honestly losing it. I was just stressing out even more because I was like, oh my god, I'm already staying back a year. I want to get my degree in 2020 and I don't even know if that's going to happen anymore because MS is just so unpredictable. You don't know what's going to happen or what it's going to do to you and part of me was just scared at that very moment. Honestly, it felt like I had enough at this point, and I just wanted to think a step ahead and maybe do something, like, not impossible, but do something that maybe could fix me. But multiple sclerosis doesn't have a fix, but there are things that we can avoid, right? So, I basically came across the idea of um, eating plants only for basically the rest of my life because I was stressing out so much and the only reason I came across this idea was because a huge part of me wanted to stop my infusions and with that being said I haven't done much research on how people do not being on infusions uh, because it, this was a thought that just never came up and it just came up right now I don't know if it was because it was that time of month again where I just felt so emotional I was just crying and yeah because I tend to stress out a lot when I'm on my period and <laughs> yeah that's just me I basically felt like I had enough at this point and I just felt like there was so much to think about because school was already stressing me out especially because the semester just started so I'm like trying to like wrap my head around everything that's going on around me because I don't want to fall behind in anything because I want to get my degree in 2020 and that will happen it's just it's gonna take a bit of a push and yeah I'll get it so um when I was crying right I was at home that day and I asked myself I was like why am I even crying right now and I was like I don't even know like I feel like a lot of the times I cry and I don't even know why I'm crying like I know this is an MS thing 
but it's just so weird. There were so many things I just couldn't do. Like, I couldn't walk properly and I couldn't do anything. Like, I just wanted to think a step ahead and maybe do something that I didn't think I'd ever do. Kind of like last year when I came across the idea of going vegan. I knew of the benefits that it could have potentially had on me, in which it did have. But um, making that change was big for me in 2019. I was just thinking about making, sorry, making that change in 2018, for 2019. Um, that whole idea of going vegan was big for me last year because I wasn't a vegan at that point, right? And I told myself, I was like, maybe I should eat plants for the rest of my life because I was like, maybe I'm not feeling much better because I haven't been having salads every day. Because I know for a fact that when I have salads um, and plants, I feel so good, guys. I, feel, I just came across this idea of eating plants for the rest of my life. Because I'm like, I know that when I have oily foods, I don't feel good. Um, or if I have things that are like um, processed or just things that are just basically crap. I was like, you know what, Pri, you need to do something that would help you like in terms of eating let's just say because for me i'm so convinced that the foods i can't even speak guys i'm so convinced that the, that the foods that we are eating is literally the only thing that controls the way our body performs um and for me i'm actually seeing that because when in 2018 when i wasn't eating vegan um, when I would have, like, let's say a chicken, my vision would shake so much. Oh my goodness. Um, it was just really crazy. And even when I would have steaks, right? I loved my steaks. Um, but I think about it now and I just feel like gagging. I'm just like, ew, I don't even want to think about the blood oozing out of the steak. I don't want to think about medium rare because, ugh, gross. Maybe I should eat plants for the rest of my life. And then I started thinking about that, and I was like, you know what, maybe I should start that for 2020. So I'm literally feeling so prepared for 2020, even though it's only September right now. I heard of all the benefits, and even YouTubers who would just eat plants and stuff like that, and feel good, right? And the one thing that I just kept forgetting was the fact that my lesions in my brain are never going to disappear. It's always going to be there. Unless there's a cure for MS, I don't know. Um, but at this point, I'm not going to rely on that cure because I don't think it's going to happen. But, um, and also at the same time, I don't want to get my hopes up on believing that there's going to be a cure for MS because it's not destroying me right now. And in fact, it's making me a stronger person and I've been learning so much since being diagnosed with MS that I just wasn't aware of before and I've mentioned this before too and I'm just more like, um, what's the word? I guess I could say I'm more self-aware for sure. I came across the idea of stopping my infusions, right? And when I went to Sunnybrook last week where my neuro neurologist Honestly, I've seen so many doctors, I'm like losing names of everything. <laughs> um, when I went to go see my main doctor for MS at Sunnybrook, I was even telling him how I'm considering to stop my infusions for 2020 um, because I just feel like eating foods, like the right foods, would maybe fix things. And even when I told him this, he told me, he was like, he will be supportive of whatever decision I make 100%, but he was also telling me how he does not think that this is a good idea. And he even brought up um, my MRI, my very first MRI from 2017, and he was basically telling me how my lesions were so bad, like it seemed, my MS seemed so severe, that even at that point, he didn't even know what medication to put me on because he didn't know what, first of all, he didn't even know what MS I had and he didn't know what kind of medication to put me on, right? So he was literally trying to like, in a sense, kind of trying to talk me out of the idea of not being on infusions because he didn't want me to get worse. And I know doctors do that all the time and honestly at this point, right, even while I was listening to him telling me to not 
think about the idea of not being on my infusions. The only reason this idea even popped up, guys, is because every single time I have gotten my infusion at Sunnybrook, I think it was about four, three or four times, I'm pretty sure it's four, um, I've honestly felt like a lab rat. Like, and by that I mean, you know those rats people test things on? That. I just felt like a lab rat, right? And it was because the drug that I'm currently on is Ocrevus. And Ocrevus, um, in 2017, my doctor put me on a clinical trial because that drug just came out. And I'm basically on a study right now. And literally that's what rats are on because <laughs> you test rats to see if things work on them. And, um, and that's what it felt like because you test things on rats or mice or whatever to see if things work on them, right? And that's what I literally felt like. Like every single time I would have the infusion in me, I would just look at my arm and think, oh my god, all of these wires. Like, is this what mice feel like? Like, I don't know. That was basically why I came across the idea of eating plants. And at this point, right, my doctor's trying to like, in a sense, he was telling me what his take was on me not being on infusions. Um, I'm like drooling. Guys, I don't even feel when I drool. I can't even feel the left side of my face because right now I was just drooling and I couldn't even feel that. <laughs> One thing I've noticed, another symptom I've noticed about MS is that I often cry and when I cry, I don't know why I'm crying. Like, it's so weird. Guys, it's so weird because sometimes when I cry, Zach will look at me and he'll be like, why are you crying? And I'll be like, honestly, I don't know. Like, I just... I don't know how to explain it sometimes. Like, I get stressed out, but that's not why I'm crying. I'm crying because I just feel like I want to cry. Like, I don't know. It's so weird. So, if I stop my infusions, what am I going to do to basically improve, right? And at this point, I was like, okay, maybe I can eat plants for the rest of my life. I don't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> I just came across the idea of stopping my infusions, right? And to stop my infusions, I told myself I'll have plants for the rest of my life to make up for my missed infusions or whatever, right? And even when I told my doctor about this, my doctor didn't think that was a good idea. But he couldn't even tell me what the right thing to do was. He even said that. Um, and it was fair because MS is basically so unpredictable, you don't know what will happen to you. And... It's like, I can't rely on someone else to tell me what to do because anything can happen, right? Like, even for myself, I can't tell myself what to do really because I don't know what's going to happen a year from now. Like, I don't know if I'm going to end up on a wheelchair uh, because my walking sometimes is not that great. And if I had to be honest, I'm kind of terrified, but it is what it is, right? telling Zach about it too. I was like, what if I stop these infusions and I get even worse? And what if I end up on a wheelchair? And for those of you watching my video right now, if you're on a wheelchair, this isn't to make you feel bad or anything. It's just being on a wheelchair is honestly something that I have not prepared myself for. Like I've prepared myself for many things, especially after being diagnosed with MS. But just being on a wheelchair was something that I just never thought of because I just thought maybe that just won't happen. But at that point, I was just crying. All I really want is just to be better and to do better. But it was just really scaring me because I just felt like my body was relying on these medications and I just didn't want that. Like, it was just stressing me out so much. I already feel like my body is relying on this medication and I just don't like how it's making me feel because I wanted to reverse this myself. I wanted to do things myself, you know? And I don't even think I can do that because my lesions are always going to be there in my brain. Like, I don't think anything can take them away. I mean, if there's a cure for MS, maybe that would. Um, if I be honest with you, I don't think there ever will be, but... Um, I just know that if I just eat like a thousand times better than just eating vegan, that maybe I could at least reverse my symptoms. And even when I was telling my sister this, my sister was telling me how 
you know what, in most cases, eating better will probably do you better. But because this is brain related, she was telling me how she doesn't think I should risk anything at this point. And especially because my doctor told me how my MS was severe. Um, and I was even telling my sister how my doctor was telling me how my relapsing remitting MS can turn into any of the other three forms of MS at any time. And that's what scared me because for the longest time I just felt like I had progressive MS. Um, and I only felt like this because I just felt like things were just progressively getting worse. But I was just able to deal with it because I'm more aware of everything that's going on, right? Whereas in 2017, I didn't know what was going on. Um, therefore, I was just scared and I didn't know what to do kind of thing or what to expect. I was just telling my sister how I was so convinced that the food that we were literally eating, and when I say we, I'm talking about everyone in this world, the food that we are eating literally like affects the way our body performs and I'm just so convinced, guys, I'm so convinced. I just felt like maybe if I had plans for the rest of my life that that would be okay. And for me, one thing I've noticed about myself is when I tell myself I'm going to do something, I will do it. When I stress out, it only worsens my MS and with that being said, It'll only worsen my vision, bladder, walking, itching, speech, numbness, stretching, and nystagmus. <laughs> what if me stopping my infusions puts me on a wheelchair? And for those of you watching my video right now, um, if you're on a wheelchair, this is not to make you feel bad at all. If I had to be completely honest with you, I have so much respect for those people on wheelchairs because I don't know how you guys do it. I really don't. I admire that so much. Um, and with that being said, right, like yesterday, I was having the hardest time opening the door. I don't even know why I was having a hard time. I think it's because I was carrying so many things. People didn't even have the door open for me. Like, you know when people walk in front of you and they'll just try to open the door for you so that they're just being nice, right? No one was doing that for me, even though I was holding, like, quite a few things in my hands, right? And literally... Um, when I was trying to get inside, the door just shut, and then I was like, crap, I have to put my shit on the floor, and then try to open the door, and then grab all my bags, and go through the door really quickly, but I was having a hard time doing that, guys. The only person that actually tried to open the door for me was this man who was on a wheelchair, and this man who was on the wheelchair wasn't even trying to get outside. Um, he was just trying to open the door for me. And I, I'm pretty sure he realized I was struggling because I wasn't even walking properly. <laughs> but I appreciated that so much. In my head, I'm thinking, how is it that people are in wheelchairs are more considerate than people that are not? Like, I don't understand. And it's not to say that everyone who's not on a wheelchair are not considerate because there are genuine people in this world that are really helpful. But sometimes there isn't, and that was one of the moments where I was like, oh my god, it really touched my heart, because I was like, you're on a wheelchair and you came back for me. The other people were walking and just walking away, and I'm just like, I was telling Zach, I was just freaking out or whatever, and he was even asking me, he goes, why are you freaking out? And I just was basically telling him how I'm not prepared to be on a wheelchair, and he literally looked at me, he goes, why are you even preparing for that? Like, why are you preparing for something that hasn't even happened yet? And I literally looked at him. I'm like, Zach, since being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, if there's anything I've learned, it's to be prepared for every second of your life. Because MS is so unpredictable. Unexpected happens all the time, especially with MS, because you, you don't know what's going to happen to you, right? And it's just really scary. And Zach looks at me and he goes, no, but what are you trying to achieve right now? And I was like, school. And he goes, okay, what about school? And I was like, I want to get my degree in 2020. And he goes, how are you going to do that? And I was like, I'm going to study hard. I'm going to stop my infusions. I'm going to eat plants. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And he goes, no, but pre, listen to yourself. You're stressing out right now. And you already know that stressing out worsens your MS. Is that something you really want to put yourself through right now? And I was like, okay, no, you're right. I, sh I shouldn't be doing this to myself. It's just really hard when you just get so ahead of yourself and you just want to help yourself, but sometimes you just feel like you can't.
Okay, so I'm going to film on my phone right now because I'm kind of running late to leave for my class that I have at 11. It takes me a while to get there, especially with walking. So for all the times I said I wanted to reverse this, I'm aware that I will have multiple sclerosis probably for the rest of my life, but I'm not going to quit trying to reverse my symptoms. I'm not going to let multiple sclerosis control me. Rather, I will control it, and by that, I could just eat better. Stay tuned for my next video. I'm probably going to post it next week because I really wanted to talk about this one thing. And, uh, I mean, I want to talk about a billion things, if I to be honest with you, but I'm just going to take it a day at a time and a video at a time because I tend to stress out for no reason, like right now, because I'm talking too fast. Okay, shut up. Oh my goodness. Pretty much it to my video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, leave some comments below because I find that really helpful or like... Even when you guys share your experiences, I find it really nice that I could connect with people. Pretty much it to my video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Check out my blog. Follow me on Instagram. I'll post links down below as always. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.